So I have a little baby snake. This little albino was born not with a fair chance for this world. It has a short lower mandible. See that, Donnie? The thing that you told me was called a shark mouth. Yes, called a shark now, mouth. Now, why don't you show me the bottom of it? Because that's what it looked like a shark buddy. So we're going to... So if we look at the side of that, it almost looks like a mako shark. Hold on, almost there. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so this is a developmental problem. This animal, something went wrong in the development of that animal. And uh, this animal is going to be inclined not to eat. And naturally, this would just fade off and it would die. But sometimes we can still manage even an animal like this if we uh, help it along in the early parts of its life just to manage uh, its health. If I do not feed this animal over time, it's going to start breaking down. We're going to start noticing a very uh, notable spine, like this ridge as the spine. This, this guy's got, you know, he's using up all his fat reserves that he was born with just, just to survive. So what I need to do is I need to put some uh, nutrition and some energy into this animal. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take a wet fuzzy. Wet fuzzy. That's a wet fuzzy. Why wet fuzzy? It's uh, easier. It's going to add a bit of lubricant. First thing is, I hold them like this, so I'm right-handed, and I hold just like that. That's all for a reason. What I do, see my thumb? Okay. See that right there? Let's see it. Okay. okay. You're opening its mouth a little bit. Well, like that. And I take the nose. So it's a defrosted fuzzy. And I look at it just like that. So now I'm softly doing that. I'm going to use a pair of straight forceps. And I can show you what will normally happen. I'll show you what happens. It just, it just He's going to panic and not want to eat it. It's even malformed right here. The back of the head is fat. We got this right. thing. We see this with super cinnamons, uh, and uh, they have often cleft palates and stuff like that. So right here, we're just gonna open up. Once again, you really you don't you want to just apply pressure, but you want to be very passive. I do that a lot, and uh, you just have a gentle touch. What I'll often do, if I have to do many, I'll sit on the floor with no shoes and I use my toes of one of my feet as an extra hand. And what I'll do is I'll locate this little guy's butt away from me so it's gonna, because they're going to fight you. So now I've got this lubricated. I said you want to expect this to be the worst possible so you want to take your time okay what kind of complications can you cause if you do it too so quick? if I do it too quick and it's not lubricated enough I can actually tear all sorts of uh, in interior parts of this uh, animal's mouth and it's down into its throat and I want to just like that what keeps this animal from choking right now so he has a glottis, and the glottis it. is the breathing tube. Guys, well, it's actually hidden right now, so we won't play Anatomy 101. So these guys have a glottis, and the glottis connects to the trachea, and that allows this little guy to breathe when it's managing a very large meal. And that's one of the talents or gifts that nature gave snakes to have this glottis. So it's like a little snorkel breathing tube. Okay, now you think, at this point, right, am I good? I will let the snake go. The snake is going to wiggle, and it's going to try to regurgitate this meal because it is not a willing participant, okay? So, ready? I'll show you. It takes a lot of energy. So, this, this snake... You know, might might take a little while, but what they'll do, they'll just play all these games. And I'm going to show you multiple snakes. So I'm going to show you how to defeat this. When I do the strike three, where I try three times before I actually do it, you're allowing some of its saliva 
to lubricate it. Okay, at this point, right? Getting it down there. So, what I do now, no, so he's gonna, he'll sit here and work this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, you always straight the body, right? Nice and slow. So what I want to do, I want to get the mouth to a closed position. So this guy, so what I'm going to do now, with a little pressure from this finger and this finger, I'm going to push it down. See right there? So I pushed it right there? Yeah. And here's the trick, ready? And crawling forward and wiggling and touching the tail is key. You're going to see me going on and on about that. All right. You must note, not too big of a meal because it's very hard for me to force feed it. And it's also going to be a problem for this animal to digest that. We want to think that their GI tract is in a tough spot right now. So we want smaller, frequent feedings, which is probably twice a week. And that's going to activate its metabolism. And it's basically going to get this guy so uh, we might be able to generate an, an appetite response. All right, so here... We got this guy, for some reason, hasn't figured it out. Do the little. Sometimes try to hook those teeth in. I can already tell you. Sometimes, he's just gonna fight me. Ready? That's just one. I'm using my wrist. And I have foam right here, so it's not all these hard surfaces. So, thumb creates some tension on the lower jaw. I hook the teeth in, and then I go like this. And I know what he's going to do, he's going to spit it up. So that's good, there's, there's some response there when it just did those little things. That's classic. Okay, so this time I'm just not even gonna play. I'm gonna put a little bit further in. Okay, let's see what he does now. So what he's doing when he's adjusting his mouth right there, that means that he's actually uh, noting what it is and it's not just some ridiculous predatory thing because don't forget the whole time this animal's going to act defensive this is something that's putting the animal under stress because it thinks something bad is happening to it and i want to get it into thinking mode and when it does that thing with its jaw that animal is now responding and actually managing the situation with its brain not out of fear so this is positive where, where we're at right now. But ultimately getting this meal into him, maybe even a couple meals, will activate a, a good strong feeding response. Sometimes these guys just don't know what it is and we have to uh, jump in there before they go too far because you don't want the health of the animal to totally decline. So he's gonna, he's fighting me pretty good. Fighting, fighting, fighting. See, look at the big blood vessel right there. Yeah. So their 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 skin is pretty thin, believe it or not. And uh, if you're not careful, you can oh, um, just tear. You can tear right through there. This one might be a better candidate than the other one, so let's see. Can I, so what I'm gonna do? I want to encourage this guy to. I didn't even push it all the way down, but get him to want to crawl. 
and I will just continue. Let me get this. Okay, get the mouse shut. Just a little bit. Over here, ready? That other one swallowed your meal. Oh yeah. This one will be easier. Look at this one. Yeah, it's yeah. right now. There you go. It's so right here. So tickle the tail. This is a good reptile hack right here. What are you doing? So you force fed the animal, right? And now what you do, a lot of times people just continue to struggle. They'll keep trying to regurgitate it. So what we do, see this is, the, see, right here, developmental. So we have, this guy was just born not right. So we have a hemipene sticking out. I have a, a kink. I mean, you make a lot of snakes so it can happen. So what we do. And all life is important, right? That's yeah, this say. is, yes, yeah, so you want to give them the best thing. So what we're, we're, we're going to try to do is we're going to, once he takes a couple of big deep breaths, because that's <laughs> very tiring. There we go. So if you make the snake crawl, right, it's going to initiate the swallowing mechanism. He's like, that tired, it, you have to understand, it really tires him up. So he'll sit there for a minute just rallying his energy. But he's swallowing. There has been no tongue flicks. There we go. There we go. Perfect. See that? Mouse tail. Doesn't have a lot to it, but it does. It has, uh, has some bone. has some skin. It has uh, ligaments and tendons. Or just tendons, I'd probably say. Make sure one thing, whenever you're doing assist feeding, force feeding, if you're force feeding something that's cold or whatever, it's going to be uncomfortable for the animal, it's going to be shocking. So we want to, you know, obviously these like to eat warm blooded prey. So I try to make sure I'm at least managing the temperatures of what I'm trying to feed it. Okay, this is going to be a tricky one. You know, in my pet store, we get all sorts of different animals and a lot of times you're getting these animals that have never fed in their lives. And I just went in my pet store and I looked, at, there was a couple snakes that hadn't eaten. So... That's a really small snake. Okay, so see right here? Mm -hmm. If we don't do something, that animal got folds of skin. This animal's pretty much um, challenged. It's slower than it would normally be right now because it just doesn't have the energy. Okay, this is gonna be a, this will be my first rosy bow I've ever force fed. Okay guys, get it. The cutoff part first, ready? So this is the trick twirl right here keep the body straight twirl 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 this is such a good reptile hack that is a good one there you go we're in good shape crawling forward bam just like that do that twice a week and it's just a matter of time before you get that metabolism kicked in there and really good chance of feeding but the trick is not let your animal go too far. You know, I understand caution, but we want to realize that this whole animal's, you know, it's not like if you just let it sit there, it's not magically going to get better. If it cannot rally its internal, you know, function, it needs energy. And the only way it's going to get energy is if we do something like this. Okay. So we got this little guy, looks good. We, we don't have the folds on it. This guy's looking really good. So this is certainly, you know, it's refused many opportunities to feed on rodents. Same deal. Get towards the front. There we go, right there. It's twist, twist, straight, straight right here. So see how I have, I'm using always my pinky right here. Twist, twist, twist. I happen to be going clockwise. Twist, twist, twist. Right here, it's time to crawl. Nope. We're gonna we're gonna force the crawling. Nope. Nope. That doesn't work. There we go. Come on. He's a strong one. He's a strong one. So we have to get his brain out of this mode. Come on. There we go. There we go. Crawling, crawling. Everything's good. Animal's brain is on, thinking, 
wasn't too traumatic. There you go. See that tongue? Critical. That tongue means brain just is absolutely on. You really want that. This is a little Boega guanciensis. These are infamous. These in dendrophila, Boega dendrophila, dendrophila, and stuff like that. A lot of these guys, they initially want to eat frogs and lizards. So if I go feed this a little a Mediterranean gecko or an anole or something, I can introduce all the parasites from that. So what I need to do is not let this animal get too bad of a shape. So a bit of assist feeding. Sometimes it just takes a couple assist feeds and then boom, it gets them going. And the first meal would be like a pinky. There we go. Already right there. This is a rat tail. Twist, twist, twist. Twist, twist. I made this all up on my own. Very, this is a really good passive, passive method to actually get something into a, an animal. There you go. Okay, tension. Get it. Right there. Hi, buddy. Twist, 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 twist. We're good. Back, reptile hack, touch the tail, get them crawling forward, trying to initiate forward thinking and tongue flicking. We're good though. This one I can already, it's just, you're good. You know that. One thing you probably want to note when you are doing these force feedings, you want to uh, do this pretty quick off like interrupting the snake out of its habitat and going right to it. Otherwise, if you put this guy through a lot of stress, you might get a lot of fighting. My, what large eyes you have. Okay, so rat tail, ready? Hi, buddy. There you go. This guy's already got it figured out. So you see how he, you notice the difference right there, Donnie? Yeah. I just wanted to show you. So some, this is just assist feeding, okay? All I had to do was just offer it something that identifies as food, and you put it in the mouth, and we're, we're good to the races. I just wanted to bring that down and show you. There he goes. Oh, he just walked it. Yeah. yeah. His mouth is, is busy, so he needs to assess what, what's confronting him. And then either decide, I need to spit this up because I'm in trouble, or I'm going to continue to eat. There you go. He's got it. He's not afraid anymore. Okay. Nope. It's, it's assessing. It's thinking. Yeah. Dude, this is the time that that snake cannot defend himself one bit. Right. And it's eating in front of you. Mm-hmm. That's... Why does he get big eyes like that? What, what's so this is nocturnal animal, guys. So this, obviously, I know you guys know this, but they come out at night. So this is an animal that makes the best use of minimal light and very, very secretive. Uh, highly uh, arboreal and terrestrial, and they'll basically investigate almost all niches of uh, their environment to find, you know, their food. They have a very fast metabolism, too. So boega, so mangrove snakes, cat eye snakes, and whatever... Really interesting animals. Uh, I, I'm truly fascinated by them. And uh, as I'm keeping animals, I do like to be challenged. And some animals that I've been doing for a long time, I start, you know, uh, okay, it becomes almost like reflex how I'm uh, doing them. And sometimes I need to start with different species where I, I just, there needs to be that window where I'm just trying to figure that animal out. And of course, that's what's uh, keeping my brain going and uh, fascinates me. But with that being said, when you're doing new species, you're also more apt to have mistakes and doing something wrong, making bad calls. And one thing that I'm really hoping is, as we're really starting to show you all sorts of the different things that goes on, that these things that I've learned through trial and error, and God knows I am filled with error, I've learned to improve my abilities, and then if I can pass on those little cheat notes to you guys, it's going to help you manage whatever you're doing, and it's also gonna cause way more animals to live, 
and with all my socialization and try to get you to understand the, the mindset of these animals, you get to develop a better relationship with your animal. And uh, we love to hear about what you know everybody has to say. I gotta turn my camera on, dude. You didn't turn your camera on!